You've seen me heal the sick. You've seen me raise the dead. You have seen me feed 5,000, feed 4,000. You have seen me speak a word and the word has gone and touched somebody. How come you don't know who I am and the power that I have already given you? How come you sit around and act as if you can? You many times have to overcome church folk in order to get to where God would have you to be. Because church folks spend a lot of time blocking instead of opening the door for you to get what God has for you. Uh, can I preach like a feeling? Uh, notice the disciples, if you will. Notice the disciples. They didn't want Jesus to talk to the woman at the well. They didn't want him to go to Zacchaeus' house. Oh, yes, they didn't want to give him anything to feed the folk. They didn't want the young people to come around Jesus. That's why he said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. They never look good in the scriptures. They accuse Jesus of not caring. Carest thou not that we perish? Every time they had a challenge, they backed up. Yet the centurion, who was not in the church, he came and Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith, not in all of Israel. Uh, sometimes the folk have to come from the outside in order to stir up what's going on on the inside. Because we have become smug and we have become sedity in our attitudes. But there was a Syrophoenician woman who hollered until Jesus answered, I, I, you came to church with me. I came in here with you. You've got a husband and a wonder, you've got a wonderful wife. You've got a Cadillac, a Lexus, a Mercedes Benz. Some of you got Rolls Royces. I've come to the house and you've got Louboutin on. I've come with holes in my shoes. And I don't have another car anywhere. I'm coming looking raggedy. And you're sitting in church and I'm sitting with you. And you look blessed all over. And I don't have a thing. And you don't expect me to holler? I'm going to holler till I get my Jesus! And my son of David, have mercy on me. Sometimes we need some folk to upset our services. Folk begin to holler and scream for a blessing. We look at the usher as if to say, shut him up. Ah, then if the usher don't work quick enough, we look for security to put him out. The devil is a liar. Give somebody a high five. Say, I'm going to holler. And if you don't like it, sit somewhere else. But I'm going to call until deliverance comes in my way. And then there is a son that is powerless. And he now is being brought by somebody with expectation. When I'm powerless, I need to be around people who believe. I need to be around people who take the roof off. When I'm laying on the bed of palms, I need to have some bearers around me that know if I can get in the presence of Jesus, I'll take you in there to him, but you better walk out. I'll carry you to him, but you better come back on your own feet based on your own faith. Then there was a devil in control. Ah, oh, and then of course, there were disciples in association. And you always have onlookers. Somebody's always checking you out to see how you're going to come out. Especially when you opened your mouth and declared what God is getting ready to do. And then, of course, here is Jesus with unlimited resources. I just got to know who to get to. And the battle is all ready won. I feel like lifting him up here. Jesus shows them that power exists in the impersonal web. And it's acknowledged to uh, the power of moving and pushing. There is an amplifier that moves the speaker forward and pushes it backward. And we call it tapping. When the amplifier 
choir is too weak, the sound will go out because the amplifier clipped. Well, he came to Jesus, and I've got news for you. Jesus won't clip because he has power above power. That's why when he operates, he operates in energy. And that's actual or effectual power. Then he's got Kratos, which is dominion manifested power. Then he's got Dunamis, which is inherent power. And that's power of being. In other words, you don't create me because I am that I am. I feel like preaching here. And so when you come to Jesus, you come to the power source. Now he is saying to Jesus, if you can do anything, and Jesus is saying to him, if you can believe. I wish I could get it right. He is saying to the greatest power in the universe, if you can do anything. And Jesus is saying to him in all of his weakness, if you can believe. The reason you can't get to all things is because you're stuck on anything. I feel like preaching. I need your help now. Can I get your help? We might as well have church. Give somebody a high five. And say, don't settle for anything. When you've got an all things call. As in Lockridge put it like this, and I borrow from him. He's got to be an all things call. Because he's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of the heavens. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Give somebody a high five. That's a neighbor that don't sound like anything. That sounds like all things. The glory of God. The firmament showeth forth his handiwork. There is no means of measure that can define his limitless love. There is no far seeing telescope that can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. There is no barrier that can hinder him from pouring out a blessing. Sound like anything that sounds like an all things God. He's enduringly strong, he's entirely sincere, he's eternally steadfast, he's immortally graceful, he's imperially powerful, and he's impartially merciful. That's my God. He's an all things God. He is God's Son. He's the sinner's Savior. He's the center of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He is august. He is unique. He is unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's preeminent. Does that sound like anything? Give some money in my heart. That sounds like he's at all things God. Why settle for anything? You've got an all things God. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine in true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. That's not anything. That's all things. And say up your prayer game Because you're talking to an all things God He's the miracle of the age He's superlative of everything Who you choose to call him He's the only one qualified To supply all of our needs Simultaneously He supplies strength for the weak He's available for the tempted And the tried and saves. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick, cleanses the lepers, forgives sinners, discharges debtors, delivers the captive, defends the feeble, blesses the up, serves the unfortunate, he guards the aged, rewards the diligent, he defies the meek. Pull on your neighbor. Say God is all things. He's an all things God. That's why I praise him. That's why I worship him. That's why I serve him.
It's time. 
And they set up a meeting. And he asked my dad, Reverend, what can I do for you? My dad is about to ask Thank you. 